Now, this is a final judgment on uh, Ferguson and whether Michael Brown had his hands up uh, and the Department of Justice report regarding that criminal investigation and whether Darren Wilson, the officer, should have been charged or not. So these are weighty matters. I, I read through the report and I want to tell you about the ballistics and uh, the witnesses so we can come to some conclusions here. First, I'm going to start with ballistics because they uh, draw an interesting and fairly definitive uh, outline on most of what happened, although there is one central question which is very, very hard to answer. So, first of all, they explain that microscopic analysis of the wound indicates that Brown's hand was near the muzzle of the gun when Wilson pulled the trigger. Almost all the witnesses also confirmed the same thing, saying that when there was the initial scuffle at the car, yes, Michael Brown was near Wil Officer Wilson's gun. It's unclear whether Officer Wilson reached for the gun first or Michael Brown reached for the gun first, but either way, there was a scuffle over the gun, and that's why Michael Brown had some residue from the gun on his hand, and that's when Officer Wilson fired the first shot. So yes, there was a scuffle over that gun. It was not out of the blue. Uh, the initial uh, action by Darren Wilson to pull over Michael Brown uh, could be disputed as to whether he had to do that or didn't have to do that. But once the confrontation began, they did struggle over the gun. Okay, now, Brown ran at least 180 feet away from the SUV as verified by the location of blood stains on the roadway, which DNA analysis confirms was Brown's blood. So this means that Brown did definitely run away from Officer Wilson after those first shots were fired uh, in the car. So he's running away. At some point, he does turn around. We go to that next. Brown then turned around and came back toward Wilson. Falling to his death approximately 21.6 feet west of the blood in the roadway. Now, what does that mean? Let me clarify that. That means that after Brown ran away 180 feet, he got shot at one point and then started running back towards Wilson, and there was at least 21.6 feet difference from the first shot to when he was shot again. So at that point, he is moving towards Officer Wilson. Now, they looked at three different autopsies here. And they all say the same thing, including the autopsy requested by the family. The physical evidence also establishes that Brown moved forward toward Wilson after he turned around to face him. The physical evidence is corroborated by multiple eyewitnesses. The question that is not answered well throughout this, including with witnesses, which we'll get to in more detail in a little bit, is why did Brown turn around? And that's something that neither side has talked about very much at all. But let's continue with the evidence. Brown then started running at Wilson, closing the distance between them to about 15 feet. So how close Brown got to Officer Wilson is a matter of some dispute, but we know that he was at least within 15 feet of him uh, before uh, he was shot to death. And, and obviously his, uh, at that point, movement forward stopped. Uh, Brown sustained a gunshot wound to the dorsal back right forearm below the elbow. This is really, really important, guys. The bullet tracked through the bone in the forearm, fracturing it, and exiting through the ventral front right forearm. So now this is establishing uh, the two shots that might have actually hit Brown from the back. Now, a lot of the media reporting on this says he was not shot in the back. He was not shot at while he was running away. Actually, if you look at the ballistic evidence and the eyewitnesses, that is entirely unclear. In fact, what I just read you there was that he was shot through the back of the arm, and the bullet went through the front of the arm. Now, since the arms are mobile, it's possible that he could have been facing towards Officer Wilson, but if that's the case, then his hands were probably up. That way, it can go through the back of the arm and come out the front of the arm. Or he's running away, in which case, comes through the back of the arm and goes through the front of the arm. So, one more bullet fired in that exchange. Finally, Brown sustained a tangential or grazed gunshot wound to the right bicep above the elbow. That also could have been from behind. That one is unclear as well. Now, they explain here what I was just telling you. Given the mobility of the arm, it is impossible to determine the position of the body relative to the shooter at the time the arm wounds were inflicted. Therefore, the autopsy results do not indicate whether Brown was facing Wilson or had his back to him. They do not indicate whether Brown sustained those two arm wounds while his hands were up, down, or by his waistband. Most media outlets, I feel like, keep saying to their audience, oh, no, he didn't get shot from behind. That's not true. You can't say definitively that he did get shot from behind. Neither one of those statements would be true. I just quoted the report to you guys. 
Three different autopsies, they all agree, and they're all unsure. He could have been hit from behind in the beginning, at, in the arms. That's why he might have stopped. We'll get to the eyewitnesses in a second, and they have interesting stories to tell about that. Or he could have been hit from the front. He might have stopped for no reason and then gotten hit in the arms when he turned around. Okay. Um, they conclude, therefore, these gunshot wounds neither corroborate nor discredit Wilson's account or the account of any other witness. So I just want to be absolutely clear about that. Uh, Wilson fired the last volley of shots when Brown was about 8 to 10 feet from him. A again, all the witnesses corroborate this as well. The final shots are in the range of about 8 to 10 feet. Okay? Uh, test firing of the gun showed that the nitrate residues appear at a muzzle to target to distance of 8 feet or less, consistent with Wilson's description and several other witness descriptions that Wilson and Brown were about 8 feet apart during the final shots. Now, look, you have some sense of what 8 feet is, right? So they're saying he couldn't have been any closer than 8 feet, he could have been a little further up to as much as 15 feet as uh, I explained in one of the other reports here, right? So 8 to 15 feet, let's call it, you know, let's call it 8 feet just to be safe. That's about three yards. Now, if you ever played football, you know three yards. Well, it's both not that close to you and kind of close to you at the same time. Do you feel that if somebody's three yards away from you, now Officer Wilson knows that Michael Brown does not have a gun, that's why he reached for, for Wilson's gun. Now, he claims that he reached for his waistband at some point when he was 180 feet away, but at that point he gets shot and he gets shot over and over again, still no gun. So by the time he's within 8 feet, it is absolutely abundantly clear that Michael Brown has no gun. And Wilson is still shooting at him when he's about 3 yards away, and that's when the fatal shot comes in. So now you can draw any conclusion you like on whether you think 3 yards is too close to him or not, that's up to you. The fatal bullet entered the skull, the brain, and the base of the skull, and came to rest in the soft tissues of the right face. The trajectory of the bullet was downward, forward, and to the right. Brown could not have been standing straight when Wilson fired this bullet because Wilson is slightly shorter than Brown. Brown was likely bent at the waist or falling forward when he received this wound. It is also possible, that although not consistent with the credible eyewitness accounts, that Brown had fallen to his knees with his head forward when Wilson fired this shot. So, two possible scenarios here. One is, Wilson is already falling, that's why the bullet enters uh, basically through the top of his head. Okay or as ex exactly as they entered how it uh, went through the skull and the brain, right? The other uh, possibility is that um, Brown is charging at Wilson and he's got his head down running towards him and that's why he gets shot through the top of the head. The third likelihood that he was already on his knees and falling, you know, it implies some sort of surrender which none of the other witnesses corroborate. So that doesn't seem to be the case, right? Uh, but it could have been that he was shooting him even though he was already falling. It could have been that he was charging at him and he was scared. Okay, so that part is inconclusive. Now, we go to the witnesses. This is very important. Uh, first, I want to give you some general notes. This is a 74 year old black male, uh, which is witness 108. And he said he refused to identify himself or give details, but told detectives that the police officer was in the right and, quote, did what he had to do. And the statements made by people in the apartment complex were inaccurate. He also said another individual reported that two days after the shooting, this is what the report said. Witness 108 confided in her that, quote, he would have fucking shot that boy too. Okay, now that's a 74 year old black male. Now, what is consistent in a lot of the witness testimony, and there is a ton of witness testimony in this case, is that um, a lot of people are reluctant to talk to the police because they are largely disagreeing with the community that he had his hands up and was surrendering. So here he says, as a general note, and I included this as somewhat representative of the overall witnesses that a lot of them thought it seemed like a justified shooting from their perspective. Not all of them, but some of them. And they have credibility uh, and, and the report explains the different uh, degrees of credibility they have based on how well they witnessed it, what their past is, and what their relative bias is. Okay? Now we'll go to a 50 year old black female, uh, which is witness 105. Witness 105 explained that Brown put his hands up for a brief moment and then turned around and made a shuffling movement. Wilson told Brown to get down, but Brown did not comply. Instead, Brown put his hands down in a running position. So let's stop here because this is very, very important. So this is the critical juncture when Brown, after running 180 feet away, turns around and starts charging at Wilson. Why did he turn around and were his hands up at that point? Well, 
this is where the witnesses are all over the map. Uh, some say that Wilson had his gun down the whole time, was yelling at Brown to stop, 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 and only started shooting after Brown turned around. Some witnesses say that he might have shot uh, initially, and that's why Brown stopped and looked at his hands. And now we go to witness uh, 110 and 111. When Brown reached a nearby driveway, he stopped and looked down at his hand, which witness 111 noted had blood on it. Witness 110 believed that Brown looked at his left hand. Brown put his hands out at his sides, palms up, as though asking, what the heck? Brown then moved toward Wilson with his hands in that same position, and Wilson shot Brown. So pretty much all the witnesses that are credible agree that when uh, Brown turns around, he doesn't stop when Wilson tells him to stop. And he starts running towards Wilson, and then gets shot more and more. What, what witnesses don't agree on is why did Brown stop in the first place? Did he get shot? Here's another witness saying he put his hands up as to say what the heck because there was blood on his hands. That explains the hands up. He was not saying hands up as in I am surrendering because he most clearly did not surrender. He started running towards Wilson according to almost all accounts. But what might explain the hands up that several witnesses saw was these separate witnesses saying he looked up at his hands because they were bleeding. Maybe because he just got shot from behind. So uh, let me give you more uh, on what witness 110 and 111 uh, saw. Brown then paused, they say. The shooting stopped, and then Brown advanced again. Witness 110 stated that Wilson shot Brown only when Brown was moving toward him and did not shoot at Brown as he ran away. So understand that too. So witness 110 and 111 are saying, look, he saw the blood on his hands. That's why he stopped and had his hands up like this. But they claim that Wilson did not shoot at him before that moment. How do you explain that? Hard to explain. Remember, these are just two out of many, many different accounts, right? Uh, they might have been mistaken in that. There's witnesses that are mistaken in a lot of things based on the ballistic evidence. Uh, or maybe a Brown saw a, a wound from the initial gunfire in the car, and that's what made him stop. It's like, oh, I'm bleeding. And that's when he stopped and turned around. And then once he started charging at him, Wilson started firing. Look, these things, you do, there's no videotape of it. There's no absolute certainty on this. These are the recollections of a lot of different witnesses. But I got a sense of what the most likely outcome was from this, I believe. Let me give you one last witness here so you can get a good sense of it as well. Witness 112, a 62 year old black male, explained that it appeared that Brown stopped running because either the pain or shock hit him. Brown turned around and looked down as though checking himself for injury. In so doing, witness 112 explained that Brown raised his arms partly, palms up, clarifying that he didn't have his hands all the way up. Brown then moved his arms out at a 35 to 45 degree angle, as if to say, what? It was then that Wilson trained his gun on Brown, and as Brown moved forward, Wilson repeatedly yelled, stop. When Brown failed to stop, Wilson fired shots. So to me, out of all the different witnesses, uh, the most credible storyline looks like Brown stopped because he realized that he was bleeding. Was he bleeding because Wilson had already shot at him as he was running away? Well, a bullet did enter from behind on his arm. Again, it might have been it entered from behind because he had his hands partly up, right? The rest of the shots are clear that as, Will, as Brown is running towards him, Wilson fires, right? But when he stopped, is totally unclear. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So let me get to the conclusions here. After reading the report, conclusion number one is there was definitely a scuffle over the gun in the car. So the, some witnesses who had said, no, there was no scuffle in the beginning, that's not true. There was a scuffle in the car. Uh, conclusion number two, Michael Brown definitely ran away. It's not like the fight happened all near the car and what could Wilson do it was in close distance. No, Michael Brown was 180 feet away uh, when he turned around. Conclusion number three. Michael Brown definitely started coming back toward Darren Wilson. Almost everybody agrees to that. So if you're on Officer Wilson's sign and you say there's nothing you can do, the guy's charging at you. Yes, Brown was charging at him at some point. Conclusion number four. Uh, it is unclear whether Darren Wilson shot at Michael Brown as he was running away. So I read the report, I read the witnesses, I read the ballistic, and I just read most of the pertinent stuff to you right now. Anybody who tells you that it was clear that Darren uh, Wilson never shot at Michael Brown from behind, it's not true. 
it, it's also, the reverse is also not true, that it's absolutely clear that he did shoot at him from behind. The answer is, we don't know. There's good, credible witnesses that say at some point, Michael Brown stops, turns around and goes, what the heck, as his arms are bleeding. And the bullet did enter the, the arm from behind. Okay, conclusion number five. Michael Brown might have had his hands up at one point, but he was not surrendering. So the reason he might have had his hands up is because he just got shot in the hands, and he was looking at it, right? So the hands up part is at least partially true. But it's misleading to say hands up, don't shoot, because when his hands were up, he might have already been shot. He never said don't shoot, and he did charge towards Wilson. And then finally, conclusion number six. This is my analysis of it. Obviously, you can draw any conclusion you like. But Darren Wilson could have been charged, but he almost certainly would not have been convicted. So whether you think Darren Wilson actually did shoot at him from behind, and that's why uh, Brown started running towards him, boy, that would have been incredibly hard to prove beyond a reasonable doubt in court. If I'm a prosecutor, what I would have done is I would have looked at that critical moment with as much clarity as I possibly could to find out, did Wilson shoot at him from behind? Is that why Michael Brown stopped? And if that's the case, I would have brought a case against Darren Wilson. If I concluded after all of this that no, I don't think Darren Wilson shot at him from behind, then I wouldn't have charged Darren Wilson either. Now, if I thought he did shoot at him from behind, which there is good credible evidence for, it could go either way, I would have gone to court knowing that I probably would have lost. Because you need evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. And as you see all these witnesses in ballistic uh, reports, it's clear that there was a reasonable doubt that Wilson meant to kill Brown and did it and shot at him before he turned around. And clearly Wilson was coming at him, and I think a lot of people would say, I'm not sure I'm in that camp, but I think a lot of people would say, hey, you know, as the guy was charging at him and he's 289 pounds, he didn't have a choice, he had to shoot him. That's what a lot of the witnesses said. Now, I think the cops are trained wrong. I believe that he could have used a taser in that case. He could have used a billy club. He could have used pepper spray. The guy had already been shot multiple times. But people will say that's a easy thing for me to conclude because I wasn't in the heat of the battle. But my guess is the jury would have concluded not guilty, which doesn't necessarily mean innocent, but almost certainly would have said not guilty because there's not evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that Wilson did intend to kill him and, and did not act in the right here as Brown was charging at him. So that is my final judgment to the best of my abilities to discern what happened in Ferguson.